In this video, we'll look at stiff differential equations and how implicit methods can be useful for solving them. After studying this video, you should be able to define the term stiffness in the context of numerical differential equation solutions. Explain why stiff ODEs pose a challenge for numerical solutions and understand how an implicit ODE solver can yield stable solutions for stiff ODEs. A stiff ODE, or stiff system of ODEs, is one in which the solution consists of rapidly changing parts together with slowly changing parts. Another way to think of it as we have widely varying time or length, it's a differential equation in space, scales. So we have things that are happening very quickly in the solution where we need to think of that in say a time of milliseconds together with things happening over a longer time period of the solution where we might be thinking of it in times of hours or days even. Stiff systems of ODEs are commonly encountered in models for vibrations and chemical reactions. In fact, the term stiffness comes from vibration models with large spring constants. When you have a large spring constants or a stiff spring, you actually end up with a stiff system of differential equations in a vibration model. Here's some examples of stiff ODEs. Uh, this first one is a single differential equation, dy dt is equal to negative 1000y plus 3000 minus 2000e to the negative t. It not, might not be immediately obvious, probably not immediately obvious, that that has widely varying time scales by looking at it. But if you look at the analytical solution here, you can see that we have one exponential function that's going to decay very quickly got an exponent of negative 1000 t and another exponential function that's going to decay a lot slower with an exponent of negative 1 t. So we have a very short time scale or rapidly changing part with a longer time scale or slower changing part. Here's another example of a system of differential equations. And this is even less obvious that it's a stiff system by looking at the differential equations themselves. But again, it comes when we look at the solution. And here again, we see an exponents with a longer time scale. Again, that same exponent actually, negative 1 times t. And then a shorter time scale, negative 100 times t in this case. So let's look at why this can pose problems for a numerical solution. So what's the issue? So here's some example Euler solutions to the same stiff system of differential equations. So I'm showing the exact solution and time steps of h equals 0 0.015 and h equals 0 0.001. And what you see here is even with a relatively small time step of 0 0.015, we see some instability in the solution. And I've blown up that graph here now just going out to t equals 0 0.2. And you can see that the solution is unstable, but the instability dies out. So over time, we have a stable solution. But Euler's method is not able to resolve that quickly changing component early in the solution. I've also got the time step of 0 0.001 here. And you can see that the h equals 0 0.001 is uh, qualitatively, at least, pretty close. So the bottom line here is we're we might want to integrate this differential equation for much longer than two seconds. Notice here we're still not at steady state. So we haven't reached any final value for y. It's still decaying at the end of the integration. And in order to get a stable solution for that very quickly changing component, right here is very quick. 
rapid change, again reflected by that e to the negative 100t in the analytical solution, and here we have the slow change. In order to resolve that rapidly changing part of the solution, we had to make a very small time step. And this has ramifications with the computational cost of the solution and also potentially round off error if we have to make that time step so small to resolve that quickly changing part of the solution that it actually causes round off error to accumulate to a significant value as we get to a later time in the integration. So in this case we had an analytical solution to look at to know that this solution was stiff. In general for numerical solutions we don't always know that the solution is stiff and this is something to watch out for as we are solving a system of equations and we see things like this local instability happen that's often a result of stiffness in the system. One way to deal with a stiff system numerically is to use an implicit method because they're inherently more stable and we can see that with implicit Euler's method. And Let's look at that. So recall Euler's method is conditionally stable for the solution of the differential equation dy dt is equal to negative a times y and what that meant conditional stability was that as long as h our time step was less than or equal to 2 over a we got a stable solution. Implicit Euler calculates the slope using the i plus 1 point instead of the ith point. So this is similar to the adams moulton method that we looked at before looking in terms of using that i plus 1 point in the actual calculation of the time step. So let's look at applying Euler's method to that same differential equation using implicit Euler's method. So if we do that we get y i plus 1 is equal to y i plus negative a times y i plus 1 times h or y i plus 1 is equal to y i over 1 plus a times h and a is a positive number, h is a positive number, so this denominator is always going to be greater than 1, which means that y i plus 1 is always going to go to 0 as we move forward in time or as i goes to infinity. And the bottom line here is that implicit Euler is always stable for this differential equation. And that conclusion is generally true that implicit methods are generally going to be more stable, but the other issue here is that they are more difficult to implement. So to see why they're difficult to implement, consider Euler's method, which is the simplest one-step method. We would expect that to be relatively easy to implement. But in order to solve for yi plus 1, we need y prime, or dy dt, evaluated at the i plus 1 time step. We can use a predictor-corrector approach, and we've talked about those, or that doesn't necessarily follow the same stability analysis. The other approach is to actually set up the entire time span of the solution and generate a system of algebraic equations for the yi's. And we can use earlier methods that we did in this class for systems of equations to solve that system of algebraic equations. But overall, that implementation of an implicit method like implicit Euler and especially higher order methods is beyond our scope, so we're not going to cover that. But I do want you to understand conceptually this idea, and it comes from the stability analysis, and we can prove it by testing higher order implicit methods on a variety of differential equations, that using an implicit method results in a more stable solution. So here's some example of 
some other implicit methods. So here's implicit Rungakutta, second order Rungakutta. And here we would have an implicit method because we are saying yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus k1h for Rungakutta, but k1 is in terms of k1. So here again, we are implicit. And this requires setting up a system of equations over the entire time span to solve. This is kind of similar here to second order Runge-Kutta with the Hughes method, for example. adams moulton is another example second order method, yi plus 1 and yi plus 1. Again, it's implicit. So again, for these implicit methods, we have to set up that whole system of equations for the entire time span. Luckily, we've got some built-in MATLAB functions that will do that for us, and we will look at those in the next video. So just to summarize, stiff ODEs have widely varying time or length scales in the solution, and that makes it so that the time step, or the delta x if it's an ODE in terms of length, is driven by the most rapidly changing component in order to get a stable solution. We need to do that for stability and accuracy. For that quickly changing component or the shortest time scale h. That very small time step can be problematic if we want, especially if we want to do a long integration because of computational cost and potential buildup of round-off error. Implicit methods offer increased stability for solving those stiff ODEs, but they're more complemented to, complicated to implement. They require setting up a system of algebraic equations and then using one of the other methods that we've covered in this class to solve that system. We can use the predictor-corrector approach to get around that requirement, that difficulty for the implicit method, but they're only going to be useful for moderately stiff systems, but they are generally a bit more stable. And lastly, how do you recognize a stiff system of differential equations? Sometimes that can be tricky, but the main indicator that a system is stiff is that you'll be, become familiar with is when we see these t short oscillations happening around a quickly changing component in the system. That's an indicator of stiffness. There are analytical approaches to show that a system is stiff, but those are beyond the scope of this class. And that concludes this video.